Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my jQuery slash Ajax tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to be able to select pretty much any of these different elements on this web page. I know it's a mess. Don't worry about that. We're going to clean it up and then dirty it up again with a bunch of different selection tools that are available with jQuery. First thing I want to explain to you is that Ajax, Ray Synchronous, JavaScript, and XML is not a programming language. It's just a series of techniques used to dynamically change web pages, communicate with a server, without page reloads and what jQuery does is it allows us to do this cross browser on any browser extremely easily and also at the same time jQuery adds numerous different functions as well as user interface widgets and plugins it will really save you an immense amount of time. Ajax can completely be done using nothing but JavaScript, but jQuery makes that process a lot easier, and you're gonna see that today. Now, whenever you first want to install the jQuery library or framework, whatever you wanna call it, it's a series of functions and tools and so forth that you can automatically add to your scripts. This is what you do, just type in script type and then define it as a JavaScript file. And here what I did was actually linked to the jQuery library that's available from Google. What this will do is, depending upon where in the world your client is, who's looking at your website, it will automatically load in the closest version of this library. And you can see here I'm specifically loading in jQuery 1.5. What's really great about this also is if this becomes 1.52 or 1.56, this is going to be smart enough to automatically load the best newest version of jQuery 1.5 directly in here for you to be able to use. And just to give you an example, this whole entire tutorial for the most part is going to be just example, example, example. But let's say you wanted to select all TD tags. Those are column tags inside of tables using just JavaScript. Well, if you saw my JavaScript tutorial, if you didn't, you should probably watch that. This is how you would do that. Get element by tag name and then write like this. You'd have to type all that stuff out. In jQuery, all you'd have to type out is a dollar sign and then TD. And that would allow you to select the same thing as all of this typing would do for you. So that's just one of the reasons why people use jQuery. It is just so extremely easy to use. Saves you a ton of typing. And the same is also true if you want to get element by ID. If you'd want to select all the different H3 tags in a document that lie inside of a paragraph tag, you just type in P for the paragraph tag, dot H3. There you go. Now you can access and change dynamically any h3 tag that lies inside of a paragraph. So that is how you do some of those things. Now I'm going to get into some specific things that you can do with jQuery to get you real excited. So let's just go down in here and this is just basic HTML. There's nothing really fancy here. I'm going to show you how to get things based off of ID names, based off of class names, based off of where they lie inside of other elements and so forth and so on. It's just a bunch of random things. This is just a bunch of random information over here. Nothing that important. Well what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to call jQuery since I have have it loaded in the document and I'm going to say document whenever you are ready for me to execute and that's what we're doing right there I want you to execute this series of functions that I lie inside of this anonymous function we went over this in my JavaScript tutorial how to create anonymous functions and jQuery is actually known as what we call a namespace, but I won't get into the specifics of that right now because they're not really important. But let's say you wanted to select all the TD tags that lie over here on the right side of your screen and automatically add padding so this table doesn't look like such a mess. Exactly how much work would go into that? And of course, before you, we want to start typing this in here, we want to make sure we close this off by ending that curly bracket right there and then by putting an end right there with that parentheses. Okay, so now this is all closed off and everything I put inside here is gonna be executed as soon as the document is ready, which is absolutely awesome. Let me scroll that up. Okay, so what, let's get back to it. I'm gonna select all the TD tags inside of the document here on the right side. And since I wanna do some CSS editing, I'm gonna type in CSS and then I'm gonna call padding, which is a CSS attribute that we're able to edit. You can edit all the different CSS attributes and I'm gonna put Six pixels, 10 pixels on the right, right like that. And that's it. I just did it. And let's jump over here. 
And you could see padding's been added right there dynamically that's been added. And this also could have been triggered through an event that occurred on the web page or any number of other different things. So that's kind of cool. Let's say we want to match all elements of class hero. Well, over here you can see this is a list. The Beyonder is unknown, Galactus is a villain, and these two guys are heroes. And they both have the class of hero. So let's say I want to be able to come in here and grab those guys. And just so you know what I mean, here they are over here. See, class equals hero for these last two guys. Hopefully you get that. All right, so we're going to go back into jQuery again. We're going to type in dot H-E-R-O, which is how you define that you want to grab a class named hero. And then we're going to come in here and go CSS. And we're going to say that we want to edit the color, which is the color of the text. You really need to know CSS to use jQuery. And just by putting that little bit of code inside of there, you can see these two guys are now red, which is awesome. Let's try some more. Let's say you want to match all li tags. That's just list item tags with the class name villain. Well, you can come in here and you define that you want to find the UL element, and then you want to look for specific li tags of type class of villain, and you want to CSS style them, and you want to change the background color to yellow. And we're not really doing this. What I'm demonstrating here is how to select different elements based off of what you're looking for. We're not doing this for aesthetics or to make this look pretty. And you can see Galactus was the only villain, so we highlighted him in yellow, and that's how we did that. Now, well, could also, Decide that we want to match everything of ID. This is important. You go and search for ID names in a different way. How do you do that? Use the hash symbol. And we're going to say numbers. And this whole entire div here is called numbers. And then let's just say we want to come in here and do some CSS styling just to make my life a little bit easier. Go in there, type that in, background color. And let's say we want to change this to gray. OK, we just did that. And this whole entire div is going to be gray now. And it is beautiful. Now, if you wanted to actually match multiple different tags inside of jQuery, that's also easy. So let's say we want to match all the H3 tags and all the TH tags. Well, you just separate them with a comma and you put as many in there as you want. And again, let's say we want to come in here, dot CSS, background color, and then let's change this to orange so that it stands out. And we do it, and we do it. Now every H3 and TH tag has set a background color of orange. So that's how you would be able to trigger multiple different tags inside of here. You can also match all H3 tags that are immediately preceded by a paragraph tag. Okay, so you can do this for any of these different tags that are available in HTML. So I'm saying, okay, I want the next H3 tag that is preceded by a paragraph tag. That's what that means right there, that plus sign. And then I want to come in here and change that to purple. And if we do that, H3 tag, let's just figure out exactly who this is. It's going to be this guy right here. It's going to be this little super guy, H3, the most important numbers that's going to be affected. And you can see that I actually applied this edit here. Well, this is actually going to override it since it comes last. You can see it has indeed overridden it. Most important numbers now is set for a background color of purple. And let's say we want to match all elements that are siblings of something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to specifically target down here where it says stuff one, stuff two, stuff three. What I'm going to tell it to do is I'm going to tell it I want you to match for all H4 tags. This guy's an H4 that is a sibling of this guy right here. And this little guy right here actually has an ID of Rand stuff. So how do you match for Rand stuff this ID name and find a very specific sibling? I'm going to show you. Come in here and we're going to type in Rand stuff since that's an ID. And then we're going to hit tilde. It's in the upper left hand corner of your keyboard if you don't know. And I'm going to say I want to match any H4 tags that are siblings of that guy. And let's just copy this down here, copy this, paste it in there, file save. And you can see it's now purple, just like we wanted it to find. And you say, well, I want to also get the other tag. Well, the tag underneath that's an H5 tag. So we're just going to type in comma H5 and we'll be able to grab both of them. And as you can see, I just did that. So that is how you actually get siblings of other things inside of jQuery. We can also make all child elements of the class superhumans italic. And this is how we do that. So come in here, superhumans. And then we want to get the child elements. So everything that lies inside of superhumans is going to be changed to italic. So how do we say every element? Well, we just put a star inside of there. That represents every element. And I'm just going to say font dash dial that italic close that off jump over here reload and you can see all the children elements that lie inside of that guy are now italic 
So that's what that brace does. That targets children elements. And there's literally almost anything you could imagine to find inside of jQuery in regards to grabbing something. Like here, we're gonna underline all the elements in a div that contains a H4 tag. So we're gonna say div. We're looking for a div that has a H4 tag inside of it. So you just speak it out just like you're thinking. And then we're gonna come in here, dot CSS. And then we're gonna get a text decoration, comma, underline. And you can see it underlined all of those different guys inside of there because that div contained an H4 tag, okay? So that's why those are all underlined now. You can also select a div, for example, with an ID defined, and if you choose, put a border around it. Same sort of thing. Div ID dot CSS in here. Border, and let's create ourselves a border. PX, let's make it solid black. And you can see that now these divs have borders around them, just like that. And the reason why is because this div has an ID associated with it, and this div has an ID associated with it. Let's say we come in here and we say we don't want this ID in there anymore. If I'll save it, and it'll go away. See, went away. So that's how you can define based off of whether an element has an ID or not, just simply having that attribute. You can also select, let's say, li tags based off of having a class which is equal to a value of hero. Be very specific about what you're looking for. Make sure you put double quotes in front of that right there. And let's say we want to put CSS, and let's just say we want to put a border around all our heroes to protect them from the villains and the unknown. Just copy that, paste it in there, and let's just change this to blue and maybe two pixels. So these are the two heroes. Let's reload it. And you can see now they're surrounded by blue borders. Again, we can change all these based off of events, based off of timers, based off of anything. Almost anything's available and possible inside of jQuery. And what's really neat, let's actually just copy this line. Remember I said this is a very specific way. We're looking just for classes with heroes. Well, we can search for things in very non-specific ways. Let's just put a caret symbol inside of that. What that's going to do is it's going to return all the tags that have an attribute set of type class. And these attributes can be any attributes. They could be border. They could be anything you want. And let's say that we just demand that it begins with a letter V. So we want an LI tag that just begins with a letter V. And if you give us one, we want to change it to purple. What's that going to match? It's going to match Galactus, who is of type class villain. See, we didn't have to type all that out. And you can see there, now he's surrounded with a purple border. Now let's come in here, copy and paste this again. And let's say that we want to find any matches that end with a certain number of characters. And let's just put in unknown. Okay, we got that in there. And let's change this to orange. File save. Boink. Now they are both surrounded with orange. We want to just come in here and select the beyonder. Let's put in a W. That's going to get me unknown and unknown easy. And it's going to leave Galactus as purple as we left him in the past. So you can put multiple different letters in there. You can put just one letter. You can do anything you want. We can also select based off of whether a certain element, in this situation I'm going to say that it's a list item, whether inside of there, the text contained with inside of it is of type, let's say, Richards. So here we're specifically looking for the text that's inside of it. Like that, close that off, put that there. And then let's just jump up here and grab background color. Dot CSS, and then we'll change this to cyan to make it stand out. So these two are going to change background color cyan. And they did. So that was just based off the text that was contained inside of them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some styling on this absolutely god-awful looking table up here. So first off, let's come up here and let's get rid of this gray so it doesn't look quite so hideous. And then I'm going to jump into the styling area. I'm going to show you how to change classes. And I'm going to get more into this in later tutorials. I just wanted to give you a taste of this just so you see some of the other power that's available inside of jQuery. So let's say I want to do some styling and I want to say table, th and td. And let's say we want to create a border of one pixel, make it solid, make it black. There we are. And then we're gonna also create table row. We're gonna call it nice table column. Do some styling on this background. F A F A D2. And we're gonna create another definition that is going to be triggered when mouse rolls over this guy. Okay. This mouse on has nothing to do with this event, though. I just wanted to give you a taste of what can be done with events. Background. 
in here, we're going to say 1E9OFF. So we just find these three different types of styles. These are the two we're going to be playing with, though. So let's jump back down into our jQuery area. And here I'm going to show you how to change the class definitions for elements of the ID numbers, which is up here. Now let's just file save this just so we can see. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit nicer now. It doesn't have that hideous grayness to it. All right, so let's come in here. Again, changing elements of type ID numbers. So numbers is this right here. And yes, this is true actually, by the way. So I'm going to say TR. And I'm going to say that I want to change the class on just the odd rows in this table. And then I go dot add class which is a jQuery method or function or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to say I want to change the class to nice. So this is going to make it look a little bit prettier. See, now the colors are a little bit changed on here, so it looks a little bit nicer. If you want this to affect just the even rows, you just change odd to even. It's not rocket science, see? Now it's like that, but I like odd better, so I'm going to leave it odd. All right, let's do some more. Just one more example, this is nice. Now I'm going to show you how to change the class definition based off of mouse movements. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change a ton of things based off of events as they are triggered on the page. So that should be really fun. Okay, so I'm going to go TR, and then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say on a mouse over. And if you're used to JavaScript, you know what's going on here. Trigger an anonymous function. By anonymous, I just mean it doesn't have a name, that's all. This, and I'm, this is a reference to this element that I'm performing these changes on. So it's going to be this guy. Anything that matches up over here, that's what this is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say mouse on. So I'm going to change the class to the mouse on class. And I'm going to close off this anonymous function right like that. Well then, I'm not done. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the numbers again. And I'm going to say if the mouse moves out, so mouse out, not too hard to remember, function, call this anonymous function, this, and then I'm going to say remove class, doink, curly braces, and then that. Okay, super. So what I do, file save, rewind it. As you can see, the colors are now changed, but what's also neat is as my mouse moves over it, it's changing the background color to that bluish color and then changing it back when my mouse moves off of it. So there is a ton of different ways to select numerous different things with jQuery. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I will be getting into event handling. I will cover everything in jQuery in the upcoming tutorials. And all the code is available. There's a link in the under bar if you don't want to actually type this out. Till next time.